What's going on, everybody, and welcome back to Johnny K Picks. And in this video, I'll be going over my full card picks and predictions along with the bets that I'm looking at so far for UFC 307 Pereira versus Roundtree. Now, first thing first, please hit that like button for me. Subscribe if you're new or if you just haven't yet and turn on those notifications. So, you know, when I put out my videos, I know I'm a little late this week. I was busy this weekend, so I couldn't get it done on Sunday. Uh, also, leave some comments below. Helps out the algorithm. Helps out all the videos a ton. Uh, what fights you're looking forward to. What bets you have. All the good stuff. And then check out my Patreon. Patreon.com slash Johnny Capix. I put out all my early um, UFC stuff. Any uh, bets I have. Any cheat sheets. Uh, I do uh, UFC survivor pools. If you're interested in that. So definitely take a look. You can join for free. Or you can support for $5.99 a month. to become a core member. So, yeah, last uh, Saturday was, what was it, UFC Perry, and it was good. Um, had some fun fights, everything. I'm not going to go over all of them, but some crazy ones. Mokino was a good one. Uh, destroyed St. Denis in the first round, basically, and his eyes were all swollen up. So that was a good one to watch. But there were some other cool ones. I know uh, Zion with that crazy knee finish on Frivola was a good fight, too. Um, for my bets, not, not that great. I will say, let me get to it real quick. If I even have it up here, I think I do. I don't know if you could see it. I think you see half of it. Um, you see a lot of L's there. So not really good. I ended up losing about, uh, 4.87 units. Uh, I just couldn't really hit anything. Ultima Rano just couldn't, uh, he couldn't get, um, uh, couldn't get Perez down. Uh, Brito weird fight there. Let Gomez win that one. You know, there's just not a, not everything good in this on my bet so i don't really want to go over it too much but i ended up losing it was a losing night so not really the greatest uh betting coming from me but hey i'm gonna try to turn it around here before the end of the year and we'll get that going again and we'll get on some hot streaks all that good stuff the ups and downs of betting is lovely but let's get into the fights coming up here we got 12 fights for ufc 307 uh, the first fight going to be Tim Means versus Court McGee. And let me get this up here again. And we got a lot of these freaking ads. They are killing me. But yeah, here we are. Uh, yeah, this is the battle of the uh, UFC bets, if you want to say. So Tim Means, you know, he's a well-rounded guy. He's got pretty good striking, pretty good grappling as well. Good volume on the feet. He has been subbed a ton in his career. Um, he's only been KO'd a few times. I think his last time was KO'd by Uro. So he's coming off a KO loss. He's already taken a lot of damage. He's 30, he's 40 years old. I thought McCourt was a little bit older and he's uh, not. So yeah, he's coming off a lot of subs. A lot of the su sub losses too are club and sub type. So he is kind of getting knocked out if you want to say, but uh, they just are finishing him instead. And then you got Court McGee here, who was also on a three fight losing streak. Um, he's been knocked out a couple of times but went to decision with Morona, which that was a very controversial decision, very close. It could have it could have went McGee's way, but, you know, he's pretty good. He's well-rounded, too. He's pretty durable. Cardio's good. Um, he looked pretty good in his last fight. He likes to, you know, grind on his opponents a little bit, grind them down, wear them down a little bit with his wrestling. He didn't really use too much wrestling in his last fight, but um, maybe he, he'll use it here. So we'll see what happens, but I think this is pretty much a, coin flip fight i think it can go either way i'm just gonna go with the dog i'm gonna go with court mcgee's he's a little younger uh both guys have taken a lot of damage and they've been have a lot of miles on them but um i like mcgee in this spot i think he's a little bit more durable too and i think he can land a good shot on tim means maybe that'll rock him and maybe he'll get a club and sub or even a knockout um but and i can also see court mcgee winning a decision so i don't know about tim means i think he's more so uh finisher bust nowadays or he'll get finished or so if you want to say kill or be killed but I think McGee still has a little bit of left in the tank for this one. I think he's going to get this one done. Uh, I'll say by finish, maybe second or third round, but wouldn't shock me either if it's a decision. So give me Court McGee. I'll say second round finish. I don't know if it's a, a sub or KO, but I'll say that. Uh, next one, we got Oban St. Pru versus Ryan Spann. And this fight was supposed to happen, I believe, a couple weeks ago, and um, it got pushed back here. So St. Prue, you know, he's a well-rounded guy, mainly a striker. He can wrestle and grapple, but, you know, he's getting up there in age. It's four, He's 41 years old. Uh, he's got good kicks up the middle, Good, uh, pretty low volume. 
He looked good in his last fight against Kenny Njiku. Um, I don't know how, because all the other fights before that, he he was not looking good, but he turned it around with, for whatever reason. Um, and we got Ryan Spann, who's one has one of the you know craziest fight IQ, super dangerous guy early. He fades as the fight goes on. He's got good power in his hands, good uh, chokes. And um, yeah, the longer the fight goes, more than likely he's going to lose. I know the last fight he went to... Uh, the one I'm talking about is Anthony Smith and went to decision. It was split. It was very close, but you know, he's getting out of there in the first round or he is getting them out in the first round other than that one lately. So um, I'm going to pick Ryan span here. I think he does. I don't, you know, I don't know if he gets a knockout or whatever. This could be a crazy fight. Either way, I'm staying away. There's a lot of fights that I am staying away. Um, I will let you know. So probably six out of the 12 fights. I'm probably not going to have a bet on. This is definitely one of them. I'm um, going to pick Ryan Spann. He's a younger guy. I know his fight IQ isn't the greatest, but I think he is more dangerous and um, maybe can't probably can't get him OSP out of there in uh, two rounds. I think Ryan Spann's probably going to lose a decision or maybe even get finished himself. So give me Spann to win. I'll say by finish again, um, I could see a knockout. I could see a, um, like a club and sub type uh, submission. But it can be crazy, too. Maybe it goes to decision. But I'm just going to go with the Ryan Spain. I think it's going to hit harder. It's going to have more moments. And uh, OSP, you know, 41 years old. So there you go. Next one. Man, this keeps jumping. Next one's going to be Carla Esparza versus Tisha uh, Pennington or Torres, if you want to say. Uh, I believe both of these fighters, this is their last fight. They're both going to retire after this, if I'm not mistaken. But Esparza is a good wrestler good takedowns her striking is just okay it's not great she definitely uses her striking to set up takedowns takedowns she's very durable good cardio um and pretty good takedowns too she recently had a baby got married all that good stuff so she hasn't fought in two years so this is her first fight back from um, being a mom so you know how that usually goes and never never really goes that well uh, Tisha Pennington, though, she already got that baby fight out of the way against Tabitha Ritchie, which was a very close fight, but she's well-rounded, very more so a striker, uh, pretty good takedown defense, good power, quick hands. Um, she's got good cardio, uh, durable, durable too. So, um, you know, they're about the same age. Carla's a little bit older, but I'm going to go with Tisha. She already got the baby fight out of the way. Um, it's hard to always pick and or back uh female fighters that are coming back from having a baby and she's been gone for about two years. So the inactivity is there as well. Um, and also don't forget to, I forgot to mention this earlier. It's in Salt Lake. So there's going to be some elevation. So people might slow down a little bit uh, quicker than usual. Um, so we'll see what happens with Carla and her wrestling. So if Tisha can stuff the takedowns early, I think she's going to be able to light Carla up on the feet and just win a decision. I think this fight goes to decision no matter what, but I like Tisha uh, I think she's going to win at least two rounds here. So give me Tisha to win by decision here. <clears throat> Next one is going to be Alexander Hernandez and Austin Hubbard. Hernandez has a solid striker with decent power. Fight IQ is a little worrisome, though. Um, he does have some wrestling he can use. He is pretty dangerous in the first and second rounds, but then he fades in a third. And like I said, he has some questionable fight IQ. Uh, Austin Hubbard, though, he's just a well rounded guy, he doesn't really do anything super amazing. He's got decent striking, decent wrestling, decent grappling, takedown defense, decent. Um, yeah, solid cardio, pretty durable, too. Um, you know, he beat Mike Michael Figlock, which was a pretty good win, actually. Kurt Hollabau loss was not. Um, and then you have Alexander Hernandez going to split with Damon Jackson, uh, Bill Algio. So he's fighting pretty good guys, but man, he's making some questionable decisions in those fights. So this is another fight where I'm probably going to stay away. I am going to pick Hernandez. I like his striking more so. I think he's the more dangerous guy, but I think the longer the fight goes, it could favor Austin Hubbard. So if this does go to decision, it might be very close. But early rounds, I think Hernandez has the power to get him out of there by knockout. So going to pick Alexander to win. I'll say first or second round knockout, but... Again, wouldn't shock me if it gets to decision two, and it's a very close split decision because um, maybe Hernandez makes a stupid mistake in the second or third round that cost him the fight. So uh, got to go Hernandez here, but staying away from betting it, I believe, yeah, he is. He's, I think Hernandez is the favorite, so it's not even worth it with that questionable fight IQ. <laughs> Next one, 
Eor Pretoria versus Cesar uh, Almeida. And um, Pretoria is a solid striker. He's got good power. Takedown defense, though, isn't the greatest. He has shown a little bit of wrestling, but more so he's a striker. He's a pretty big for the for middleweight. He has looked a little bit better at middleweight, except his last fight. Uh, but Michelle Pereira is pretty, pretty good. But he looked good, pretty decent against Robert um, Ber- Berziak. But, I mean, he didn't. I think uh, Cesar is better than that. But Almeida is a very good kickboxer. He's got good volume on the feet, good power as well, good takedown defense. And if he does get taken down, um, he works his way back up very well. Um, good leg kicks. He did lose to Roman Kopilov by decision, but it was a very close um, fight. Roman was able to get the takedowns when needed. And because uh, actually Roman wasn't doing well on the feet, he needed to take down Cesar and he was able to. So we'll see what happens. Maybe this is more so, maybe that was the blueprint that Roman gave uh, Pretoria. But I'm going to go Cesar. I don't trust in Pretoria, honestly. Uh, I know, like I said, I know he won against Robert Berziak, but um, I think Cesar is way better than that. He's a way better striker. He's more dangerous as well. Um, so I got to go Cesar to win. I'm going to say by, you know, this again, this could go to decision. It wouldn't shock me, but I'm going to go Elmeda by knockout in the second round, maybe even first round, depending on elevation too. I got, I got to factor that in because we've seen Pretoria gas out a little bit, especially if he thinks he's going to get a finish, he might just gas out and Pretoria is going to light him up. So I'll say first or second round knockout for Elmeda on this one. Uh, next one's going to be Marina Rodriguez versus Yasmin Lucindo. And Rodriguez, very good technical striker. Uh, decent power, good counters. Um, takedown defense isn't the greatest, but she's not awful. Um, she does play safe, play it safe if she's on her back. She's got pretty good submission defense. Um, but... Uh, Lucindo's also a very good striker with decent power. She's also got pretty good wrestling and takedowns with grappling. She can be a little hittable on the feet at times, which does worry me in this fight because Marina is a sniper on the feet, but her takedown defense is good. She has good cardio, uh, good durability. Rodriguez does, I forgot to mention, she does have pretty good cardio too, but we've seen her slow down in some round threes before, and we are at elevation again. So this is something you have to might want to, be a little bit careful with um but i'm gonna go with lucindo she's gonna be the younger fighter i know this is gonna be a big step up for her um you know she beat carolina um which is a pretty good win Pollyanna, eh. but um yeah i mean rodriguez is fighting the top of the top and either winning or losing so she's just getting up there in age now she's 37 so she might be slowing down a little bit but uh, I'm going to go with Lucindo. I'm going to go by decision, but it wouldn't shock me if she gets a late finish, maybe uh, maybe like a submission in the third round. So that's something you could think of for maybe some sprinkle bets because, again, don't forget about the elevation. Um, but Lucindo by decision will be the pick. Um, you'll see. This might be a, this might, up, might end up being a very close fight um, and by decision, too. And the next one is going to be Stephen Wonderboy Thompson versus Joaquin Buckley. And we all know who Stephen Wonderboy is. He's a very, um, you know, tricky striker. He's got that karate base stance and he's always uh, has very good kicks. He's durable, good cardio. His takedown defense is decent. Um, he can be controlled if he is taken down, but he has a pretty good get up game. He's always safe. Um, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I don't think he's ever been submitted. Oh, he's been submitted once. So it's probably been a while, but very tricky guy. Uh, he's getting up there in age, too. He's 41 years old. There's a lot of 40-year-olds in this card, which is really weird. But Joaquin Buckley, very dangerous guy. Good striking, good power. Sometimes his striking can be a little uh, not technical, if you want to say a little loopy at times. But um his cardio is pretty good for two rounds. And then we've seen him slow down in some round threes too. I'm wondering what happens with the elevation here too, but he's always dangerous. He got, he has some wrestling he can use, which I do uh, think he should be using some of that in this fight. So yeah, this is going to, this is a tough fight to call actually, because you obviously, you know, Buck, Buckley is 11 years younger. He's going to be more explosive, but if Thompson can stuff the takedowns early, and stay at range like he usually does. I think it's going to give Joakim some fits here. 
Um, I'm gonna take a shot. I I really think Buckley has it is gonna have to work really, really hard to get this win. It's not gonna come easy. So I'm gonna say I'm gonna go with Thompson to get the upset actually. Cause I I just think he's a tricky, he's a tough nut to crack, if you want to say like, and I don't know, like Joe King's gonna have to use wrestling to win this fight. Cause if it's gonna play out in the feet. I just see Wonder Boy just staying at range, point fighting his way to a victory. Maybe Joking uh, slows down a little bit and keeps getting hit. Maybe he gets tagged with an with a high kick too. So um, Wonder Boy is going to be a little bit taller as well. So I think this fight goes decision one way or another. But I'm going to say Steven Wonder Boy gets it done by a very close decision. That's going to be one of my upsets there. See what happens. Main card. Roman Delice versus Kevin Holland, which is an interesting fight. Delice is a very good grappler. Um, striking is pretty good. He has power in his hands. He's got very good submissions, um, heel hooks, leg locks. Um, he can be a little low volume on the feet, though. He can slow down. He's very strong if he gets his hands around you to, for takedowns. But sometimes he does struggle. He doesn't really use technique for the takedowns. He mainly tries to use his muscle and uh, strength to get those down. Uh, sometimes he can be a little too aggressive and like I said, he does slow down in some of his fights and he kind of, and that's when he gets really low by him on the feet. Kevin Holland's a tricky guy. I mean, you know, sometimes you always question whether he, whether he wants, wants to win or not. I mean, obviously he wants to fight. We know that for a fact, but he's a very good striker himself. He's very long. This is going to be at middleweight. So I always like him a little bit better at welterweight, but he's going to be a little bit quicker at middleweight, but he is small. But he does have pretty good um, grappling. Probably he can stay safe if he does get taken down, but he's going to have power in his hands. He's going to have a pretty big reach advantage of five inches too. So if he can keep this fight on the feet and stay at range, I think he can pretty much out strike Roman. Um, I, he is pretty durable too and pretty good cardio. So, Gonna go Kevin Holland here. Um, I'm, I'm not very confident because Kevin Holland's very hard to trust and bet. So I'm gonna say by decision because Roman is very tricky and not tricky. I'm sorry, very durable. Um, he, I don't even think Roman's ever been finished in his career. Maybe once, but it was a, a while ago. Yeah, he's never been finished in his career. But Kevin Holland is a finisher though, so I, I don't. It's not like it's out of the realm of possibilities but i'm gonna say kevin holland by decision i think he gets this one done um later the fight goes obviously i do favor kevin too uh roman's gonna need to get some takedowns or it's gonna be a long 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 night for him so give me kevin by decision why not next one kayla harrison versus friend of the show ketlin Vieira, and yeah kayla harrison is a judo uh judo fighter good wrestling good takedowns her striking is okay if she does land she does have some power in her hands her cardio um you know we've seen her slow down in some fights but the last fight against holly Holm, i know it only went to the second round but she looked good but we are at elevation so this does worry me a little bit if she does have a wrestle wrestle heavy game plan uh the era though is a solid striker she's well-rounded decent power pretty good takedown defense nothing super amazing um, she does have some wrestling and grappling she can use, but she does struggle to get the takedowns. Um, she is strong and tough and durable. Uh, she can be held against the cage though. We've seen it happen against Holly Holm and I believe a couple other, uh, right here, Raquel Pennington. They were able to basically hold her up against the cage for a lot of the fights. Um, but I'm going to go with Kayla. I mean, shocker here. I think she can get those takedowns rather easy and stay on top. She's got very good top control when she's on top, good ground and pound, good submissions, as we saw in her last fight against Holly Holm too. So, um, I'm going to say Harrison, maybe by first or second round finish, I'll say by sub. Um, but if this fight extends, I mean, it could get a little dicey. So that minus 800, I don't, I wouldn't. You know, I'm not super confident. I do think she wins, but not minus 800 range, maybe minus 300 for or 350, maybe tops. But I got to see elevation is a little worrisome for me. I'm, I'm going to say elevation a lot. So uh, but Harrison, give me her by, like I said, first or second round finish. Next one's going to be Jose Aldo versus Mario Batista. 
And this is going to be a very fun fight. We got Ho- Jose Aldo, who's a very good striker, good boxing, good leg kicks, good kicks in general. Very durable, pretty good cardio, good power. Um, I know he's getting a little old. He says he's 38 now, so it's shocking that he is 30. I thought he was in his 40s, but it is what it is. Very, very, very good takedown defense, though, and that's going to be key in this fight because if he can keep this fight standing, he's going to have a very, very, very good chance to win this fight in my eyes. But Batista's a well-rounded guy. He's very dangerous on the mat. He's very dangerous on the feet. He can get uh, he can be a little hittable on the feet, though. He's, we've seen him get knocked out a couple times or get uh, rocked anyways. Um, but yeah, he's got good rest. Like I said, good wrestling, good submissions. He always likes to push forward. He's got pretty good cardio, but again, if he's going to have come in here, like wrestle heavy game plan, like Marab tried to do, and it was kind of a boring fight, even though Marab did win that fight. I don't know if, um, in elevation, if Batista's going to be able to do that. So I think Jose Aldo stuffs to, stuffs to takedowns and he keeps his fight on the feet. And I think he's going to be able to win this fight, whether it's going to be by decision or, or a knockout. It's probably going to be by decision, though. Um, I think if there is a finish, it would be Bautista. But man, Jose Aldo is super tough and durable. But uh, either way, I like this fight to go to decision. But I'm going to go with Aldo landing the better shots on the feet and uh, getting some leg kicks going. And uh, Bautista can have a little bit of a tough time trying to get jo- Jose down. Maybe that tires him a little bit. So Aldo to win. I like him as a dog prices plus 145. I think that's a good bet. And uh, yeah, give me Jose. Co-main, we got Raquel Pennington versus Juliana Pena, first of the uh, title fights. Pen, uh, Pennington, did I say Raquel Pennington? Raquel Pennington versus Juliana Pena. Okay, my might have said something else. Pennington, uh, solid striker. She's very strong in the clinch. She can be a little boring at times, but she does have a decent pop in her hands. She's shown a little bit of her submissions against um, Macy Chazon as well, but most of the time she's going to go to decision because she's very tough. She's very durable with good cardio but she's just not dangerous. She just does everything pretty decent. Juliana Pena, very good grappler. Um, if she can get the fights in the match, she likes to push forward. She is very tough. She does leave herself open for counters, as we saw in her last fight against uh, Amanda Nunes. She was getting rocked time and time again, but she kept getting back up until, well, it went to decision, but she got knocked down at least three times, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, she just runs right into punches. But, you know, she's like I said, she's got good cardio, and um, she's just a little bit sloppy with her striking sometimes when she pushes forward and she can be a little too aggressive. But other than that, she can get this fight to the match. She does have slick grappling and good submissions. So um, I'm going to go Pennington. I just don't think Juliana is going to be able to take down Pennington. I, Pennington has very good takedown defense and Pena hasn't fought in two years. Um, at least Pennington staying active. She's fought about three times before Pena has. Um I think she'll be able, this is, I believe this is five rounds. Yeah, five rounds. So um, I like Pennington there. I think she can hold her up against the cage if need be. And, um, you know, probably be be the more technical striker too and um, land some good shots. So give me Pennington to win a a close, maybe not super close, but probably like 48, 47 decision. I I wouldn't be shocked, maybe 49, 46. But um, I I just see Pennington winning this one. unless Pena can wrap up like a some kind of submission um, and pull it off that way. But I got to go Pennington here. And we got the main event. Interesting fight. Alex Pereira versus Khalil Roundtree. Uh, we all know who Pereira is. This is going to be his fourth fight in 2024, which is insane. But he's a very good technical kickboxer. He's got a very good left hook that basically KOs anyone and everyone. Very good leg kicks. Just like just kicks in general, um, decent takedown defense. He probably doesn't have to worry about being taken down in this fight. Um, okay, cardio. We'll see what happens if this fight extends around three. And um, yeah, durable too, and um, has that KO power. Uh, Roundtree is a powerful striker himself. He's got good uh, kicks. He's pretty durable. He does slow down as the fight goes on. The longer it goes, his takedown defense isn't great. Uh, he's not going to shoot any takedowns. I don't think he's ever shot a takedown in his uh, UFC career. Um, so maybe Alex Pereira shoots a takedown. So we'll see. What, maybe that'll be interesting. So uh, got to go Pereira here. I think he gets this one done in, in the first or second round. I think he gets a knockout. Um, and if he is struggling, this is five rounds. Maybe he does. Like I said, maybe he does go for some takedowns later in the fight because he might be a little tired. But uh, 
I think early on he's going to touch that chin at one point and um, just get the knockout here. So Alex Pereira by knockout first or second round is what I'm saying, what I'm liking. I don't mind anybody parlaying Alex Pereira, to be honest. But alrighty, that is it for UFC 307. Uh, appreciate everybody hanging out and uh, definitely make sure you hit the like button for me. Subscribe, all that good stuff. Wednesday night, which is a couple of nights now. Defend your units will happen. Me and Cody for from Blood Money MMA Bets. We will do our live show as always on Wednesdays. Saturday, before two hours before the fights, we'll have, also do a live show as well with maybe a guest or two. We'll let you know. So definitely check that out too. And uh, if you need to kill some time before the fights, that's what we like to do too. So I uh, appreciate you hanging out with me and uh, made this one a little bit shorter than usual. So hopefully everybody likes that. Take care. See you next time. Good luck with your picks and bets.